about human beings living in a cave. All their lives, from their childhood, they've been chained up in such a way that they cannot move their bodies, and all they can see in front of them is a dark wall. Because they have never been outside of this cave, all they know about life is this dark wall. However, one day, a slave is released, and he discovers a whole new world outside of the cave. And because he is now the enlightened one, his job is to come and free those that are still trapped in the cave. Look, think about it like this. The front row consists of kings, bishops, queens, pretty much the people in charge of the country. The second row is made up of pawns. The pawns are the least important and are pretty much what the leaders use to protect and benefit themselves. They're meant to be used for your own advantage. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're talking about speaking the truth in love these days, and uh, it's uh, it's really important for us to to be the kind of people that that God calls us to be, both speaking 100% truth and doing so with 100% love. Uh, give me just a moment here. Sure enough, we're going to have technical difficulties right after that great video. There we go. All right. There we go. So it's important for us to be speaking the truth in love. It's got to be 100% of both. That's what Jesus did. Jesus lived that kind of a life. And we follow him in that. And so what we've been trying to do is figure out how do we do this? How do we, how do we live a life 
where we're, we're speaking the truth that God gives us, and we're loving everyone in the process. And um, we spent some time with that, and we're, we're now transitioning into hitting different kinds of topics that, uh, that you have chosen. The first one I want to hit on is self-esteem. I think self-esteem is one of those issues that is just really, really important for us to handle. And uh, my slide did not have things. That's not good. Um, all right, we might have to do this without it. Let's see if that does it. Now. You're just going to have to imagine what I would have put on the screen <laughs> until, we, uh, until we get this figured out. Um, let me just try one more thing. Which I love when it happens. It's great when it works. No, that's not happening. All right, Sean, let's just turn it off and we'll go without it. So along the way, what we did is we, uh, we developed all sorts of different questions that we would ask ourselves. And those are actually in your bulletin. I'll be asking you to refer to those as we go along. Uh, different questions that we ask as we go through these, uh, these issues of speaking the truth and love. Self-esteem is one of those issues that seems to be at the heart of a lot of the things that we deal with. That when we're, when we're looking into the heart of, of um, a lot of the other issues that we've brought up, the heart of a lot of the things that we find ourselves dealing with, um, self-esteem seems to be the, the thing that kind of finds its way closer to the core of that, how we view ourselves. And so um, one of the things that is uh, fascinating about self-esteem is that we have a tendency in our own lives and in our own hearts to draw our feeling about ourselves from the people who are around us. We put certain people on pedestals and we say, I have to be like this person. Or if I'm going to be a success in life, I have to be that. Or, um, you know, you remember the, the image of those girls in the hallway and there was this picture of a, of a yellow masked girl saying, this is beautiful. This is an epidemic in our country. The, the women of our country can absolutely not be content with the bodies God has given them. Because there are standards out there that say, you have to look like this. There are girls killing themselves because they weren't given bodies that look like that. And, and that's just one example among many where our, our self-worth is bound up into all of these things that are around us. And so we've got to get into this. We've got to be able to speak the truth in love into the situation of somebody who's struggling with self-esteem or ourselves when we struggle with our own self-esteem. And it's important for us to go through these questions. So the very first question there is, what is true? What is true? And this is God's truth here. This is not the truth that, that we're producing for ourselves somehow. We're trying to make up for ourselves. This is God's truth. What is true? There are two things that are true I really want us to focus on. The first one is that God created us all uniquely equipped to be a blessing to other people. So if we, were to, if we were to sort of think about how God designed the entire world to be, each one of us are made to be unique, different. Even twins, identical twins, end up being different. Why? Well, the way God made all of this to function is that every single person is there to love everyone else and to support everyone else. None of us are made with everything that we need to be, to be successful or to be, or to be good in this world. We're all made to be working together toward that aim. Uh, so that every, everyone's gifts and abilities mesh and work toward one another and lift each other up. That's the image of the creation that God has. And God made us each unique so that we can contribute in a unique way into that. So that we are all working together and others benefit us as well. So God makes us to be different, unique, and there's a beauty in being content to that, content with that. You know, there's a beauty to simply saying, God made me with certain gifts, abilities, talents. He made me a certain gender. He made me with whatever, this, this life that he's given to me so that I can be a blessing to others. And he made other people different so they can be a blessing to me. 
It's this kind of a perspective I think is really important. That is true. But there's something else that is true. Um, something that kind of flips it all around. And the other thing that is true is that the world doesn't work that way. As much as we would love to have a world where everyone was perfectly supportive of one another, that we could work together to do amazing things, it just doesn't end up being that way. We are all selfish. And we all have a tendency to keep for ourselves those things that God has given to us, rather than share them with others. And what happens then is that there, it kind of spreads throughout. And, and if everybody is, is simply keeping to ourselves, or taking advantage of other people, we have an entire system that was supposed to work beautifully, but now is dysfunctional. We find ourselves in the midst of that very alone. Like in, the, in the video, you saw the girl, she was very alone. She felt very disconnected from everyone else. And they were disconnected from her. The, the passage of scripture that we had for our epistle lesson today, from Ephesians chapter 2, begins that way. He starts with this business of everyone, all of us, dead in our trespasses and sins, right? Right? And he even includes himself. He says, we are all by nature objects of wrath. But then you get all the way to the end of that. After talking about being saved by grace through faith. And he talks about being God's handiwork. Created through Christ Jesus for good works. And so you see those two realities. Yes, we live in a broken world, but God intended it so, so that everyone in their uniqueness could be useful to everyone else. And be supported in that way. So that's what is true. The second question, then, is what story are we telling ourselves about the truth? This is where a lot of self-esteem just gets trashed on the stories that we tell ourselves. So you can, you know, remember, of course, those girls who were standing by that, that poster of beauty, and there they were, all of them with their yellow masks, primping the hair, and she's walking by. What do you think the story is that she's telling herself about that moment? What is the story? She's telling herself, maybe I'm not as good as them. I'm not as pretty as them. I don't look like them. I'll never be like them. They don't like me. I'm useless. What do you think the story is that the girls are telling themselves? If only I could look like the girl on the poster. Then I will be beautiful and popular. Then I will, and you know what? There are all these other girls around me, but I'm, I'm, I'm prettier than them. Or maybe it's, I'm not quite as pretty as the prettiest one. All right? I'm not quite as popular as the most popular one. Right? And there's this game that gets played. Or did you see the girl? There was a girl along the way. I hope you caught this. She was walking along with one colored mask, and as she walked into the group, she pulled the mask off, and there was another mask underneath a mask that I matched the colors of the other masks that were there. What do you think the story is she's telling herself? I've got to be a chameleon. The way God made me, not good enough. I have to change who I am depending on the group that I'm with so that I can be accepted. Now these stories that we tell ourselves, you know, I mean, the, the video takes place in a school, but I think we can all relate, right? We, we play this game with ourselves where the, the standard for life is set by other people. And we're seeking something that will affirm us in our hearts. Imagine it kind of like a, a ladder, you know. You're just trying to climb this ladder in life, and there's always somebody who seems to be above you. And so you're, you're trying to get up there. Maybe you'll even pass them. But you know what? That other person's going to look at you and say, well, I've you know, got to be like them, and so i got to pass them. And there's this like leapfrog thing. What happens when somebody gets to the top and you're not there? And you'll never get there. What happens when, when all of these expectations and desires for our life simply are left on the table unfulfilled? We crash, don't we? And so there we are. We've, we, we're, we're just, we're nothing now. Man, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't live up to my expect, the expectations for me. 
I didn't live up to the things that I wanted to be. I didn't live up to the standards, whatever they might have been. So now, now I guess I'm nothing. Now I guess I'm a nobody. I'm worthless. I might as well be dead. And I think that the person who made it to the top probably struggles with similar things. You hear about all these people who are wildly successful, who are really inside very hollow and feeling like it's just the world is empty. Yeah. Because they're having the, some, some, a different realization. They got to the top. They finally made it. There's nowhere else up to go. It's very lonely up there. And it didn't fulfill what they wanted. But what are you going to do? Come down? No. You've got to stay up there. These are the stories we tell ourselves. It's amazing, these stories that we tell ourselves that, that degrade us and pull us down and into something that's, that's untrue. The third question has to do with who is affected by our choices? Who is affected by our choices? If you think about our world as being thoroughly interconnected, then you realize that the choice that somebody makes over here will eventually funnel its way to the other side of, of things, and, and it'll, it'll affect people along the way. But when we struggle with self-esteem, we become very, very inwardly focused, and we don't see how the things that we do, the things that we say, or our inability to do those things affects people. So, for instance, if, if, you know, if we have a, a picture of, of creation the way God made it so that everybody is participating and loving and supporting everyone else, what happens when one person decides to stop? Okay, well now, all of that love that was supposed to go out, all of that help and commitment the way God designed it was supposed to go out. Now that's not happening. All right. And chances are, the very same person is going to push away all of the love and support that wants to come to them. So now what? While the person can't see it in the moment, their feelings about themselves have affected all of these other people. All of these people who love them and support them, want to support them, are all the people who they could have loved and supported. I think it's very important for us to see that picture, that picture around us of all of these people who we can love, the people who we can support. We get to the next question then of how, what do those people need to have God's truth? And when we talk about those people, we're talking about the people who are affected by our choices. We're talking about them. We're not talking about ourselves. See, usually this is where we go, right? So we're going to be going and we're going to be talking about good things, and then suddenly we're going to turn the sermon into a self-help thing, right? So here's how you need to fix you. That's not necessarily why I want to go. Because God didn't necessarily design us to just fix ourselves. God actually designed us to be loving for others and have others love us. So the question really is, what do other people need? What do the people who are around us need to hear God's truth? And, and, if, and if you're the one struggling with self-esteem, or if or the people around you are struggling with self-esteem, there are a few things that I think are really important that, that, will, that will cut through it. And I think the very first thing is unconditional commitment. Unconditional commitment. People who struggle with self-esteem, whether it's you or other people, we build conditions into our life for acceptance. So the only way people are going to really like me is if this condition is met, or that condition is met, or that condition is met. And if it's not met, then I'm really nobody. Well, what happens when somebody comes along and says, I love you no matter what? You can be a total screw-up in life, and I'm still going to be there for you. You can insult me, you can push me away, but I still love you, and that's not going to stop. I mean, we all need that, don't we? But especially someone who feels the weight of the world on their shoulders and feels alone. I think, I think other things that people need, and this has been my experience in kind of working with people who struggle with self-esteem, 
is that, 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 you know what the next thing they need? They need to know that they're sinners. They actually need to know that they live in a, in a thoroughly broken world. And now it seems kind of counterintuitive, right? If somebody is down and they feel like, like you know, the world is against them, it doesn't feel like they're kind of piling on them to say, well, you're a sinner too. But it doesn't really work that way. Because for somebody who is, who is seeking their esteem from other people, yeah, you're, you're, you're judging based upon other people and the people around you, fellow sinners in this world. But when we talk about being sinners, we're talking about not living up to God's expectations. And there's something different about that. That this is the one that matters. That we don't live up to what God has designed us to be. Which means, it doesn't matter so much that I don't live up to what everybody else wants me to live up to. What matters is God has expectations for me. And there's something absolutely freeing about that. To say, I can kind of release all of that, and I can look to what God designed me to be. And then the very next thing you do is give them He's the one who has reconciled us to God. He's the one who came down and was esteemed not. He was the one who was beaten and whipped and tried for us. He was the one whose death on a cross forgives us of all of our sins. And, and for somebody to, to know that somebody loved them that much and to believe that, to be forgiven, it's a life-changing thing. And then to release it. So there's a forgiveness that comes from God. But I think for a lot of people, there's a forgiveness that needs to come from self. To say, I'm going to forgive myself for not being what everybody else expects of me. You know, all of these crazy standards that we have out there in the world. And instead, I'm going to live a life of forgiveness for God. I'm going to live a life where other people can, can know that I love them and I'm with them all the time and that I will forgive them no matter what. It's a completely different existence. And then finally, people need to realize that they have been created by God to contribute, to love, and to be loved. I think of that image of the girl who in the, in, the, uh, in the video where, where she falls and she breaks her mask. Her covering doesn't work anymore. It was the greatest gift ever. And then she, she takes the mask off and you notice like she's, she still doesn't, she looked like there was like stuff on her head. Like she like hurt herself or something, you know? And, and even yet, this broken person who's been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, without shame, can go out and say, here I am. This is what you've got. This is what I've got to give. This is what people need. All right? This is what we all need. The final question is, how do I love people toward the truth? Um, what can I do? And, and quite honestly, I think... I think we don't know that until we know the people we're talking to. So I would say the very first thing you can do to, to guide people toward the truth is to actually love them and listen to them and befriend them and encourage them. You gotta, you gotta be there. You gotta be with them. You gotta hear them. That's huge. That's just what Jesus did, right? He came into our world and he listened to us and he loved us and he sacrificed for us. And I think the second thing we can do is be vulnerable and actually talk about our own sin. I know that's a really challenging thing for us to do, but I think it's really important. When people are struggling with their own self-identity and, 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 and being down, it, it's, it's refreshing to hear someone else come and say, you know what, I have similar struggles. I, I have these failings that I'm doing. And they re you can relate on the fact that we're all sinners and that we can all be redeemed. I think we also, it would be helpful for us if we, could, if we could somehow embody the joy of the forgiveness that we received. The joy that comes from knowing that we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And there's a certain confidence. Jesus says when, you know, when you, if, if, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. We need to live that freedom life. 
A life that says that, that we can love people with the truth, no matter what. We can hold to what is absolutely true, and we can love people with that truth, regardless. And, we, and if we can just be that around people who are struggling with, with their self-esteem, and love them that way, that speaks volumes. And finally, I think it's important for us to recognize what God has made people to be. Sometimes when you're so inward, so deep, it's hard to see how God made us to be a blessing to each other. And maybe mirror that, show that to someone. You know, God made you such to be such an amazing, beautiful person. I want to guide you toward being that. Knowing that it's really Jesus who's going to be able to do that. Hopefully this is, a, this is a helpful kind of look into how we can speak the truth in love to, to people who are struggling with self-esteem. Whether they're up at the top and they feel all alone and nobody knows it, or they feel like they're at the bottom and, and things are really a, a struggle for them. And I, I pray that we will be the kind of people who will be able to speak that truth and completely love people along the way. Let's pray about it. Lord God Almighty, we're just so thankful for uh, the gift of life you've given us, for this, uh, for the truth being given to us, and for your love that we can reflect out to others. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that, that you would guide us into that truth, and that we might do it regardless of how we feel about ourselves. But that that we would have an esteem that comes from you. That we would simply live as the people you designed us to be. And to do so in a way that lifts other people up. Being humble and gentle. Meek. So that we might be merciful. Guide us, Lord, as we do so. Speaking your truth in our heart. Amen.